and welcome back guys in this video i would be teaching you the working of actual vapor compression refrigeration system cycle and tell you how the pressure enthalpy and temperature entropy diagrams are drawn before starting with the video if you are new to this channel please subscribe to my channel by pressing the subscribe button below and check out my other videos all the links are given in the description below and if you have any doubt regarding this video please mention in the comment section below and if you want me to teach you some other topic that you do not understand please mention that too in the comments now starting with the video i suggest you that if you are if you have not watched my vapor compression refrigeration system cycle video then you should watch by pressing the li link in the description then that is ideal now this is actual if you do not understand that ideal you cannot understand this so i suggest you that you first watch that video and then come again all right now starting with point 1d this is point 1d that is on the saturated vapor line 1d from 1d to 1c there is superheating then 1d to 1c there is superheating then all right 1d to 1c that is 1d to 1c the temperature increases 1d to 1c now from 1c to 1b there is heat gain in the suction line that is the, there is temperature that is low in the suction line and outside temperature is high so heat is gained in the suction line heat flows from outside to inside so temperature increases 1c to 1b now from 1b to 1a that is from 1b to 1a this point 1b to 1a there is pressure drop in the suction line all right 1b to 1a pressure drops so temperature also drops from 1a this is 1a to 1 from 1a to 1 there is pressure drop when the vapor refrigerant enters the inlet valve of the compressor due to wire drawing effect or you can say throttling effect there is pressure drop when the vapor refrigerant enters the inlet valve of the compressor all right now we got point 1 similarly we got point 1 from 1 to 2 there is polytropic compression in the compressor from 1 to 2 from 1 to 2 all right from 1 to 2 polytropic compression now from 2 to 2a there is pressure drop at the exit valve of the compressor like here it was inlet valve now pressure drop in the exit from the from the pressure drop in the exit valve of the compressor all right from 2 to 2a from 2a to 2b it is pressure drop in the delivery line pressure drop in the delivery line and from 2b to 2c it is de superheating de superheating the heat is removed from 2c to 3 there is heat rejection in the condenser similarly from 2 to 2a 2a to 2b and here the temperature will be constant from 2 to 2a 2 to 2b all right and from 2b to 2c there is de superheating so temperature drops from 2c to 3 there is constant pressure heat rejection this is constant pressure line this is constant pressure line this this all right from 2c to 3 now from 3 to 3a it is sub cooling all right now when it reaches 3a point like from 3 to 3a it is sub cooling now from 3a to 3b there is heat gain in the liquid line that is before passing through the 
expansion device there is heat gain from the atmosphere all right so we have shifted this 3a point from 3a now it goes to 3b because heat is gained similarly from 3a to 3b temperature rises so it is shown like this from 3b to 4 it is expansion process or from 3b to 4 it is expansion proce process in the expansion device so it is constant enthalpy process so it is constant h and pressure drops so we get the point 4 it is on the saturated liquid line all right and from 4 to 1d that is heat absorption in the evaporator all right similarly from 3a to 3b from 3a to 3b there is heat absorption in the liquid line and from 3b to 4 there is expansion process and 4 to 1d again evaporation process that is liquid is evaporated heat is absorbed in the evaporator so this is the actual vapor compression refrigeration cycle that is pressure enthalpy cycle and this is temperature entropy cycle all right now there are two points that you should understand that is not given in most of the books and i am going to tell you that this is the overview now i am going in depth that how there there is two points that should be noted that is there there is huge pressure drop in the evaporator from 4 to 1d there is huge pressure drop from here to here this is huge pressure drop all right whereas in condenser there is not much pressure drop from 2c to 3 all right now why this happens now This is the question why pressure drop in evaporator is much more than in condenser. Now pressure drop can be by two ways that is friction pressure drop and momentum pressure drop. In evaporator because there is vapor refrigerant so specific volume is high. Mass flow rate is given by AV by nu or you know that it is given by rho AV so AV by nu. Nu is the specific volume. Specific volume is 1 by density. So, AV by nu. So, if nu that is specific volume increases, so as to make the mass flow rate same, velocity has to increase. So, velocity of flow increases and so velocity head increases. By Bernoulli's equation, you know that pressure head, head has to reduce in order to maintain the whole head constant. So, pressure head reduces. So, pressure reduces. So, pressure at the outlet is reduced. All right. friction pressure drop we assume to be same for analysis friction pressure drop we can assume to be same in evaporator and condenser but the main factor deciding the pressure drop is momentum pressure drop that is the pressure drop that occurs due to the momentum whereas in condenser there is specific volume is low because there is liquid so velocity is reduced velocity head is reduced so pressure head increases and hence pressure increases at the exit so total effect now the total pressure drop is the combined cumulative effect of friction pressure drop and momentum pressure drop in evaporator friction pressure drop is also prevailing and momentum pressure drop is also prevailing so they add there is additive effect so hence the the pressure drop in the evaporator is much more and it is much more significant while designing an evaporator all right whereas in condenser the friction pressure drop is positive that is friction pressure sorry friction pressure drop is negative that is pressure at the exit that is pressure at the exit is low decreased because of the friction but at the same time momentum pressure drop is positive that is the pressure at the exit due to this momentum of the flow the pressure at the exit is increased so in net there is very low drop in the pressure 
in condenser i hope you understood that is in evaporator there is cumulative effect both get added that is friction pressure drop and momentum pressure drop both are negative so there is cumulative effect they both add so pressure drop is much more significant in evaporator in condenser the friction pressure drop is negative all right but the momentum pressure drop is positive so while adding there is a low pressure drop total all right so this is the answer for this this is the main point now other other topic that is to be understood is that why there is polytropic compression instead of isentropic compression all right why this happens that is i am saying that from 1 to 2 from 1 to 2 why there is this trend that first entropy increases then it decreases why it is like this why it should not on increase all right from 1 to 2 why the pressure first increases then decreases why not it increases only just like in ideal case why this happens from 1 to 2 what is the phenomena behind it that i am going to explain all right now from 1 to 2 that is now this is this polytropic compression it takes place inside the inside the compressor at the beginning of the compressor compression process there is low temperature vapor inside the cylinder of the compressor so heat flows into the system that is heat flows from outside to inside all right this i have shown here low temperature at the beginning so heat flows into the system from outside to inside and after the compression process the temperature increased because of the compression i know that you all know that temperature increases after compression when temperature is increased of this vapor refrigerant so it is high temperature and at surrounding it is low temperature so heat flows out all right so initially heat flows into the system so it is positive afterwards heat flows outside the heat flows out of the system so it is negative and entropy ds is equal to dq by t that is change in entropy is equal to change in heat upon time upon temperature ds is equal to dq upon t that is change in entropy is equal to change in heat upon temperature so change in entropy is directly proportional to change in heat but but initially heat flows into the system so dq is positive so entropy change is positive that is initially it increases entropy is increasing that is entropy is increasing and then after some time it starts to decrease entropy starts to decrease from here to here up to here it increases then it starts decreasing now initially heat was positive so entropy change was positive entropy increased then at later stage of compression dq became negative heat flows out of the system that is dq is less than 0 so dq negative so ds is negative that is entropy decreases all right i hope you understood this question also these two are the important aspects that are given in only very high level books and you will not find in your regular course books so i thought that these two points should be clear to you and uh, in other lectures other tutorials they have not explained these so i have made this video if you have found this video helpful please give it a big like and if you have any doubt please comment and if you have not yet subscribed if you have found this video helpful please subscribe to my channel i am sure that you will get benefit and uh, all right then take care thank you bye bye